For class, we are doing 5.2 verifying trick identities, so you should have a bunch of notes printed out from Moodle or RSF if your circuit took notes on. Uh, so these are the rules for verifying trick identities, and the one major thing I want you to do is change one side of the equation only. And we're just going to use all the techniques that we did in 5.1, and we're going to change one side of the equation to look like the other side, and we are never going to divide by a trig function, dividing by zero. Um, and if you try something, it doesn't work, try something else. Um, and the one thing that I do see helpful is using horizontal fraction bars and the fra the lines of your paper um, to help you write neat fractions. Um, so we're going to get started on problem number one. So there's multiple ways to do these. Um, if you look in the back of the book at the answers, the answers are going to say answers may vary. Um, and you saw that in geometry when you did proofs. So for these, um, we're just going to try something. So here I see two fractions. Well, when you want to add two fractions together, you need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction by sine of theta over sine of theta. And the second fraction, I'm going to multiply it by secant of theta over secant of theta. And now that I have a common denominator, I can write it as one big fraction sine of theta cosecant of theta plus cosine of theta cosecant of theta all over the common denominator of sine theta secant of theta. So what we did is we had two fractions with different denominators, we found common denominators and wrote it as one big fraction. And then what I'm going to do is replace the cosecant and secant with its reciprocal identities cosecant is 1 over sine of theta, and secant is 1 over cosine of theta. And when you have sine of theta times 1 over sine of theta, those will cancel. So you have sine of theta times cosecant, which is 1 over sine of theta, plus cosine of theta times secant, which I'm replacing with cosine of theta. And all of that was over sine of theta times secant of theta. Now sine of theta cancels with 1 over sine of theta, so we're left with 1. And cosine of theta times cosine of theta cancels, so we're left with 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we have 2 over sine of theta secant of theta, which you can split into two fractions as 2 over sine of theta times 1 over secant to theta, and sometimes separating that out into two fractions is helpful because now 1 over secant to theta using the reciprocal identity that is cosine. So we have 2 over sine of theta times cosine of theta over 1 because secant and cosine are reciprocals. And then if I combine these back into one fraction, 2 cosine of theta over sine of theta, you see cosine over sine is cotangent. So we have 2 cotangent of theta, and that is what we wanted. So we are done. Moving on to problem number 2. Okay, problem number 2, the ugly side is the left-hand side again, so we are going to change the left-hand side to make it look like the right-hand side. So with this one, whenever you see um, the trig identity squared, you should look at the Pythagorean identities. And you have your long list of Pythagorean identities. If you didn't print it out, it is in your book. And the Pythagorean identities, you can see one um, on your list that says that tangent squared u plus 1 is secant squared of u. And if I rewrite the Pythagorean identity, and the identities on your sheet of paper you can rewrite and rearrange, I get, if I bring this term over, I get 1 is secant squared u minus tangent squared u. So this is what we have, and we can replace it, all this, with 1. That's directly the Pythagorean identity. So I have 1 plus tangent of theta all over secant of theta. So I want to get this to look like cosine plus sine. So if you have tangents and secants and you want to get sines and cosines, what you need to do is rewrite everything in sines and cosines. So I'm going to rewrite it with sines and cosines.
So I have one plus the tangent is sine of theta over cosine of theta using the quotient identity. And my denominator secant of theta is one over cosine of theta. Now this is where it is really helpful to use the fraction, not the fraction, the lines of your paper to help you write the fractions neatly. So I have one plus sine of theta over cosine of theta. So if I want to add those two together, you are going to need a common denominator. So I'm going to take my one and write it with a common denominator as cosine of theta over cosine of theta. Plus, I still have the sine of theta over cosine of theta. And all of this is that numerator. I just changed one to be cosine of theta over cosine of theta here. And that was still over the denominator of 1 over cosine of theta. So reminder, we're working one side only, and we're going to manipulate this until we end up with cosine theta plus sine theta. So now I have in the numerator up here, I have uh, two fractions with a common denominator, so I can add them. So I end up with cosine of theta plus sine of theta all over cosine of theta, all of that all over 1 over cosine of theta. Just copied my denominator over there. And in the top, I wrote my two fractions as one big fraction. Now you might notice that this numerator here is what we want. So if you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I have cosine of theta plus sine of theta all over cosine of theta, which is my numerator, and I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is cosine of theta over 1, and now those cancel, and I'm left with cosine of theta plus sine of theta, which is what I want. Okay, problem number three. I see this problem and it screams use the FOIL method or box method to multiply it out. Um, so this would be similar like in algebra, if you have a plus b times c plus d, you would multiply the first, the outer, the inner, and the last. Oh, that wasn't the last. b times d would be the last. So that's what we're going to do. So we are going to do that here. So we're going to multiply the first together. And if the box method is better for you, use the box method. So we have secant of theta times cosecant of theta. That's the first. Then we have the outer, which is plus 1 times secant of theta. theta. First, outer, inner. So the inner is tangent minus tangent theta cosecant of theta, and then the last one times negative tangent, so minus tangent of theta. So the algebra that's screaming out right here is FOIL or box method, and we want all of that, all of what we have to be cotangent. Okay, <coughs> so now what you want to do to this is if anything can cancel, right away cancel it. Otherwise, write things as sines and cosines to see if things will cancel. So secant is 1 over cosine of theta. Cosecant is 1 over sine of theta. Plus secant, 1 over cosine of theta. Minus tangent, sine over cosine. Cosecant, 1 over sine. Tangent, sine over cosine. So, <coughs> first terms we can multiply together, middle term, then over here you can notice those things cancel and I'm left with 1 over cosine, so I have plus 1 over cosine and minus 1 over cosine. Those cancel entirely, okay, 1 over cosine minus 1 over cosine. So now we really only have two terms left. So this is multiply, so you can write it as 1 over cosine theta sine theta, one fraction, minus sine of theta over cosine of theta. So now we have 
two fractions with two different denominators. So we need to get this to have a common denominator, which is cosine times sine. So we're going to multiply this term by sine of theta over sine of theta. And I have 1 minus sine theta times sine theta is sine squared of theta, all over the common denominator cosine of theta times sine of theta. And we still want this to look like cotangent. So we know cotangent is cosine over sine. So somehow we have to get cosine over sine. So again, up here, I see the Pythagorean identity. And when you look at the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, or 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. Remember the Pythagorean identity? cosine squared u plus sine squared u equals 1, or if I bring this over here and that over there, <coughs> nope, just the one over there. That is what it looks like. I just want to bring that on and screw it up. So cosine squared u is 1 minus sine squared u. So 1 minus sine squared u is cosine squared u going to replace this with cosine squared u all over cosine theta sine theta. So my Pythagorean identity is what I did here. Okay, so I have cosine squared over cosine times sine. Remember cosine squared? It means it's cosine theta times cosine theta. So this is cosine of theta cosine of theta is what the squared means, all over cosine theta, sine of theta, cosines cancel, <coughs> and I'm left with cosine of theta over sine of theta, which is cotangent of theta, and we are done with our problem. Okay, problem number four looks like a huge mess on the left hand side. so. We are just going to do some algebra. This first part says, just distribute. So we have cosecant times cosecant, which is cosecant squared, which is a good sign because ultimately we want cosecant squared, which means the rest of this has to go away somehow. That would be our hope. So we have cosecant times cosecant gives cosecant squared. Then we have cosecant times a negative sign. So we have cosecant theta times sine of theta. Then we have this plus this fraction. And remember, you can separate fractions into two pieces. So we can write this as plus sine of theta over sine of theta. So that's this first part here, minus the second part, cosine of theta over sine of theta. If you don't see what I'm doing here, look at what we have. And you have two fractions with a common denominator, so you can write it as one big fraction. Um, and that's what we did. It's kind of separating it out um, as if you have two common denominators of two fractions. And then we have plus cotangent, which I'm going to go ahead and just um, write down as cotangent of theta in my last term. Okay, so we look and see if there's anything that can cancel. So this, we should see cosine over sine, that is cotangent of theta, so that cancels with that. Sine of theta over sine of theta, well that just equals 1. Then we have cosecant times sine, well you should know those cancel because cosecant is 1 over sine of theta times sine of theta, or sine of theta over 1, so those cancel, then we're left with 1. So we have this cosecant squared of theta. This middle term here gave us minus 1, so there's a minus. Then plus sine of theta over sine of theta was plus 1. Minus, this was cotangent, and this was minus cotangent plus cotangent. That went away. The minus 1 and plus 1 cancel, and we're left with cosecant squared of theta, which is what we wanted.
Okay, so for this one, we need to um, recognize that this right here is what we call one of the cofunction identities. So under 